ionisation, excitation, energy levels and spectra. Ionisation. This is the process of producing ions and ions are charged particles. There's a few ways that we can create charged particles, one being alpha, beta and gamma radiation when it passes through a substance Alpha, beta and gamma collide with the atoms in that substance, creating ions. Another way, as in this diagram here, is electrons. And electrons passing through a fluorescent tube, uh, colliding with atoms of the gas in the tube, and then knocking an electron out of the outer shell. Just to clarify about ions, obviously within the atom there are a number of protons and a number of electrons. If the number of protons equals the number of electrons, then the atom is neutral. Once we take one electron off, there are now more protons than electrons, so the overall charge of the atom is now positive, and the electron that's been knocked off, as in here, um, is also uh, considered to be an ion, a charged particle. In this diagram, this positive here is, is the nucleus, not the number of protons. We can measure the energy needed to ionise a gas atom by making electrons collide at increasing speed with the gas atoms in a sealed tube, just like this diagram here. We can adjust the potential difference across the tube and if we increase that potential difference, the electrons move at increasing speeds. The gas itself actually needs to be at a very low pressure or a sufficiently low pressure, otherwise there's too many atoms in the tube and the electrons can't reach the anode here. So, the potential difference is increased and eventually ionisation will occur. And in fact, ionisation near the anode causes a much greater current to pass through the ammeter and so we will see an increase in the current at the ionisation energy. To calculate the ionisation energy, when we know the potential difference where this increase in current occurs, um, the ionisation energy is equal to the work done on each electron from the filament and is given by the equation EV. If we go back to GCSE, we know that electrical energy, for example, is equal to the charge times the potential difference. And it's similar here. The ionisation energy, I'll call this IE here, is equal to the charge on an electron times the potential difference where we see the sudden increase in current. So it's EV. Charge on an electron is minus 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. At this point it's worth mentioning the electron volt. The electron volt is a unit of energy equal to the work done when an electron is moved through a PD of 1 volt. Um, we use the electron volt instead of joules because uh, if we keep using joules obviously the number will be very small because the charge on the electron is very small. So when we're looking at ionisation and excitation, we use the unit of energy, the electron volt. And that is stated with a small e and a large v. For example, an electron, when it moves through a potential difference of 1,000 volts, um, the work done on it will be 1,000, 1,000 electron volts. Now, another process that happens in gas-filled tubes uh, shows that gas atoms can actually absorb energy from colliding electrons without being ionised. So the electrons are coming along through the tube and the atoms will, can absorb um, energy without electrons uh, being knocked out of their shell. And this process is known as excitation. If the colliding electron loses its kinetic energy when it causes excitation, the current, 
due to the flow of electrons through the gas is reduced because obviously um, that electron is no longer getting to the anode. And the energy values at which an atom absorbs energy are known as its excitation energies. So what's going on here is the electrons coming in. We've got an electron in one of the shells being excited to a higher energy level. It's not being removed from the atom, that will be ionisation. It's going up to a higher energy level. And the interesting things occur when that electron drops back down again. So let's have a closer look at the energy levels in an atom. Uh, this is a diagram representing energy levels all the way up to electrons being removed from the atom, which would be ionisation. And these energy levels are, are measured in electron volts. So for this particular atom, at its lowest energy, um, is minus 10.4 electron volts. So that actually means that it would need minus it would need 10.4 electron volts to remove an electron from the ground state away from the atom. The lowest energy state of an atom is called its ground state here. And um, if that electron in that ground state is moved up to another level, so this is to the next level, then it's said to be excited. In a particular atom there may be electrons in a number of levels and when the one of the electrons maybe in this third level is moved up one or it could even be moved up a number, it is said to be in an excited state. Now the interesting thing that happens is when the electrons uh, return to the ground state or jump down levels. And when they jump down levels, of course they are losing energy. So what's happening to the energy? Well the energy, as they jump down, is emitted as a photon. And it's a photon of light. And the energy of the photon is determined between the difference in energy between the two energy levels. So equation-wise, energy of the photon, which is Planck's constant times its frequency, is the difference between the two energy levels. So when it moves from energy level E1 to a lower energy level, E2. It is important to remember though that energy of the photon in terms of HF would be in joules. So you need to convert your energy level energies from electron volts to joules. And how we do that, all you do is multiply by the charge on an electron. Another way of exciting electrons to different energy levels, other than ele external electrons colliding with the atom, is using photons. If you shine photons onto atoms, these photons, if they're of the right frequency, will be absorbed by an electron in the atom and we'll move it up an energy level. Then, of course, the electron can move back down and the photon be emitted. So you might say, well, what's the point in that? A, f uh, a photon of a particular frequency coming in, exciting an electron up an energy level, and then the electron dropping back down and, and emitting the same frequency photon. Well, in this particular example that I'm going to show you here, we have a high energy photon coming in, exciting the electron at more than one level, could be two or three, so there it is, 
And when it drops back down, it can actually step down through or cascade down through the energy levels. And each time it goes, it drops down an energy level, it emits a photon of energy equal to the difference between those two energy levels. And so you've got a photon here of a particular energy and a photon here of another particular energy. And these two energies will, will be lower than the, the energy coming in. If we add them together though, you can see that they add together to equal the 5.7 electron volts. So the total energy in equals the total energy out. Now this happens inside the a fluorescent tube, which is what we have here. If you haven't seen Mr Council's video on how a fluorescent tube works, you really need to. If you Google CRP, CRGS and the fluorescent tube, you'll find the video very quickly. But just to summarise it, it works by ionisation and excitation of the mercury atoms as they collide with each other inside the tube. And when the electrons in the mercury atoms um, drop back down, the, they emit ultraviolet photons as well as visible photons. And the ultraviolet photons are absorbed by the coating of the fluorescent tube. And that coating then does this cascading idea. So it absorbs the ultraviolet radiation or ultraviolet photon and then that excites electrons in that coating and the electrons drop down a number of levels inside um, the atom, emitting photons of different frequencies. And some of those frequencies are visible light. Others are infrared, so we've got a bit of heat. But that's essentially how the fluorescent tube works. But do watch Mr Council's video. He now has about 3,500 hits. Nowhere near what this is going to get. Anyway. Now, for a particular element, or gas of a, gas of a particular element, there will be particular energy levels. And these energy levels are like the fingerprint of that element. And because there are particular energy levels, so we draw some energy levels here. Here's the ground state. And here are some other ones. The difference between the, the energy of each level will produce a particular frequency of photon. And so what we find is that for a particular element, we will get certain photons being emitted. And these photons will have specific wavelengths and frequencies. You can see in this diagram here what the fingerprints of these three elements are. The top one is hydrogen, so we've got a red, we've got a sort of green yellow, and then we've got some blues. The middle one is mercury. And you can see that these lines are at different wavelengths, here's the wavelengths here, for these three different elements. And as already stated, the energy of the emitted photon is equal to the difference of the energies in the energy levels. Why has this become so important? Well, these line spectra, as they're called, are used to distinguish what elements are out there in space. They've also been used to measure the Doppler effect, so how fast um, galaxies and stars are moving away from us, and led to the discovery that the universe is expanding. Amazing. The hydrogen atom. Hydrogen atom is one of the, sim is the simplest of atoms. One proton and one electron. But what we can do is excite the electron to higher energy levels 
and when it drops back down it emits photon and obviously then we get different photons corresponding to the differences between the energy levels that it is it is dropped down to the energy levels of the hydrogen atom relative to the ionization level are given by the formula here and n corresponds to the energy level so n equals 1 is the ground state n equals 2 is the next one n equals 3 is the next one and so on so when an electron moves from one particular energy level to another the energy of the photon um, emitted is given by this formula here Niels Bohr applied the quantum theory to the motion of the electron in the hydrogen atom and so produced the first theoretical explanation of the energy level formula for hydrogen. And the next lesson is more into quantum theory, wave particle duality, light and particles having both wave and particle properties.